The central processing unit is probably the most, or arguably the second, most important component in any gaming build. It feeds your graphics card the data it needs to render, and without it your system would be lacking an equivalent to its brain. So what are some of the best chips to look out for as we move into Q2 of 2023? Spoiler, Intel continues to dominate the list continuing on from last year. Before we get into this video, I want to say not to forget to leave a like and or a comment, especially if there's something you think I missed. I also wanted to start off on more inexpensive chips and then work up to more value offerings that may be slightly more expensive but offer performance that's worth the extra money. Without any further ado, let's dive into some of the best budget chips for early 2023. The Ryzen 5 5600, or even the 5600X, is an awesome, now sub $200 6 core from AMD that offers strong single threaded performance on the now relatively inexpensive AM4 socket. Pair this chip with a B550 board and you'll have PCIe 4 connectivity for NVMe drives and GPUs, along with compatibility with cheaper and still very performant DDR4. The actual single Vermeer chiplet in this processor sports 12 threads clocked up to 4.4 GHz and contains 32 MB of L3 cache. Compared to Intel's 6-core offerings from the same time period, this chip has significantly more cache and is also built on TSMC 7 nanometer lithographic process, making it more power efficient. What's more attractive about this chip though is the price. Coming in at about $140 new if you're buying the base non-X part, however the platform costs around this processor are also relatively inexpensive when compared to AM5 and newer LGA 1700. As a side note, I would recommend to avoid the Ryzen 5 5500, as while that chip is also cheaper than the base 5600, it's actually based on the mobile Saison die, and as a result has half the amount of L3 cache, hurting performance significantly. For the price of the 5600 and the motherboard, it's pretty hard to beat, but if you're looking for a comparable offering from Intel, then there are two options worth discussing. First, I'm going to mention the i5-11400, and its iGPU fused off sibling, the 11400F. This 14 nanometer hexacore from Intel sports the solidly last generation Cypress Cove cores, which, while featuring less total cache than the previously mentioned Ryzen 5 chip, overall I'd argue it's similarly performant in real world applications. Clock speeds, when compared to other 11th gen parts, aren't anything special, coming in at 2.6 GHz base and 4.4 GHz boost. But from my personal experience with it, clocks basically lock to the maximum boost if you keep the chip cool. Considering that this is a 65 watt TDP part, you probably wouldn't want to use the stock cooler that it comes with, but you could definitely get away with something cheaper like a Hyper 212 Evo. For $130 used, this processor offers incredible value performance that, while not record breaking, is able to solidly hold its own despite being based on older manufacturing techniques. And compatibility with an older and more mature socket allows for you to pair it with more inexpensive B560 motherboards. Like AM4 socket boards, the price of LGA1200 boards has come down a lot recently, and PCIe 4 connectivity for your GPU and M.2 drive might help to make this particular processor a stronger choice over the slightly less expensive and slightly older i5-10400. Conversely, if you want to get the most modern platform so you can upgrade to a higher core count part in the future, then the i5-12400 and 12400F, which can be consistently found for about $150 on used sites, is one of the best deals currently available. For the price, you get a full 6 hyper-threaded Golden Cove cores, that while being more powerful than the Ryzen 5 5600 or the i5-11400, also draws more power and is as a consequence harder to cool. This means that, while it's nice that Intel includes a stock cooler, you're going to need to pay for another heatsink, which just adds to cost. But for the additional heat, you get 18 megabytes of L3 cache, which is an additional 6 megabytes over the previous gen model of the same name, while simultaneously offering over double the amount of private L2 cache and introducing DDR5 support. For a budget build, I'd probably go with DDR4, but the memory controller on this chip is technically more sophisticated and more compatible with more memory kits than other chips we've discussed up to this point. B660 boards are also technically more expensive than AM4 boards, but they usually come with more features and also allow for proper memory overclocking. 
This is technically the most powerful chip on this list so far, but for the performance you're paying additional money, leading me to be more comfortable recommending the previously mentioned Ryzen 5 5600 or i5 11400. They still get the job done and their prices and platform costs are overall more attractive. Building off the i5 12400, we've also got the i3 12100, which can be found for around $100 on eBay. This 10 nanometer quad core, also from Intel, provides crazy value on the chip itself, but like the i5 12400, is held back from an automatic recommendation by more expensive motherboards. Like the previously mentioned i5, this Alder Lake chip crushes the competition when it comes to gaming workloads, thanks to its high single-threaded performance. But it falls behind in more prosumer workloads because it's just lacking physical cores. With a base and boost clock of 3.3 and 4.3 GHz respectively, this chip isn't pushing the limits of the silicon, and as a result it only has a maximum TDP of 60 watts sustained and 89 watts when in PL2. This chip, when compared to older 6th and 7th Gen i7s, is beefy with 12 megs of shared L3 cache, along with more modern memory and PCIe controllers. This chip comes with 20 PCIe 5 lanes, but depending on the board this can range from full Gen 5 support to partial Gen 4 and supplementary Gen 3 support. I'd pay attention to the type of board you're picking up if you're looking to upgrade at some point to a more powerful chip, but realistically the i3 is designed to work with more inexpensive boards, memory, and coolers, so you should be good to go if you're looking for ways to cut cost in your system. Continuing on with Alder Lake, the next chip is only a recommendation for those looking to tweak with their system or are willing to spend more on their platform as a whole. The i5-12600K, a 10 nanometer 10 core part also from Intel, offers six hyper-threaded Golden Cove P cores clocked up to 4.9 GHz, along with four additional Gracemont E cores clocked up to 3.6 GHz. This equates to 16 total threads, along with 20 megabytes of total shared L3 cache. This chip allows you to get the best of both worlds in terms of single and multi-threaded performance. The high clocked and high logic density P cores allow for games to run on what we generally refer to as a CPU core. And these are designed to be low latency but with a high silicon footprint to allow for strong performance in tasks requiring those performance characteristics. To complement this, and supplement multi-threaded throughput, the E cores are designed to be physically smaller in terms of performance, die area slash transistor count, and power draw. These cores more so supplement compute throughput and provide raw compute when latency isn't as big of a concern, and multi-threading is of a larger concern. Cell phones have been doing this for over a decade now, and laptops are starting to take this approach as well, and it allows for more efficient multi-core scaling. But this translates to a chip that can tackle gaming and professional workloads, and for around $200 used, it's hard to complain. I mean, yes, not all the cores are equivalently performant, but the chip is equipped with cores designed to tackle different workloads in different manners than the competitors. Worst case scenario, you can just turn off the E cores and rock with a very capable 6 core. And even so, that's not that bad of a price for 6 cores that are this powerful. Keep in mind though that this chip will require a separate cooler and a more expensive motherboard, so the platform cost may be a bit more than the price of the chip itself is hinting at. Another chip that is similarly performant and comes in at about $180 depending on where you're looking, is the Ryzen 7 5700X, a 7 nanometer octa-core from AMD built on their Zen 3 microarchitecture. While the now infamous 5800X3D does exist and would kick the pants off any of the chips we've mentioned on this list, the price of the X3D part is over $100 more in a best case scenario, making it pretty hard to recommend as a budget chip. But for everyday gaming and content creation, the base 5700X has the horsepower to plow through them without an issue. With 32 megs of shared L3 cache and 512 kilobytes of private per core L2 cache, along with a 4.6 GHz boost clock, the chip has impressive raw specs for the price. With full PCIe 4 support as well, you'd be able to run modern M.2 drives at their full speed, and modern GPUs will be able to make full support of smart access memory, also known as resizable bar. This chip can be paired with a relatively inexpensive B550 board as well, and still enjoy all the modern features. If you're looking for straight bang for buck and you've got an AM4 board or are looking at one, then the 5700X would be a great start to a mid-range to high-end system. So thank you for watching. 
And if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you think and which chip you'd pick up if you were in the market for a budget CPU. If I had to put my money where my mouth is, I'd probably consider a build with either the i5-12600K or the Ryzen 7 5700X. Either way, any of the chips in this video would be perfect for mid-range gaming builds. That would also give you the flexibility to do some actual work on the side. Anyways, that's all I really have to say. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.